What do you do when you're practicing against the clock? So maybe you've got a gig or an audition coming up in a few days and you just don't feel ready. Well, the first really important thing you have to do is just accept the situation. Don't try and change it. Don't wish it was different. Accept things for what they are. And this can feel uncomfortable because, you know, you want to be able to be completely ready. You want to have everything perfect. But sometimes you just have to accept that there is literally only so much you can do. You're going to have to let some things go. You're not going to be able to do everything that you want to. And accepting this is part of the battle. You know, it can be half the battle. So one thing that will really help here is remembering that you are likely to judge your performance much more critically than others will. So you will see all the details. You will know everything that you could have done and that sometimes you didn't do. And the audience will typically be there and they're, they're thinking about the big experience. They're thinking about how the whole thing makes them feel. So yes, it is uncomfortable not to be able to do everything that you want, but remember that that will be much more uncomfortable for you than it will be for other people. Now, we will look in a bit at the question of, well, how did you find yourself in this situation? Should you have got in this situation in the first place? But that's for later. When you're actually trying to get things ready in a limited amount of time, you have to forget that for now. Just focus on what you can do, what you have the ability to do. And by the way, this video is happening because someone got in touch and literally asked me this question. So first of all, that means we've got some little specific examples of a, you know, a particular situation that I'll, I'll get to in this. So it's not just theory, there's some you know, specific details in the questions here. But also, if you have similar questions that you might like me to make a video on, just put a, put a note in the comments below and you never know, maybe I'll, I'll make a video answering your question at some point. So carrying on though, the next thing that you've got to do, you've, you've accepted the situation that you can't do everything. So the next thing is you've got to work out what are the most important things that you need to do and make sure that those get done. So this is all about turning that acceptance into a practical plan. What are the things that I must get done in the time or I've got a whole load of things that I would like to do, given that I can only do some of them, which are the ones that are the most important to get done. And once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to click the like button on this video. <laughs> no, okay. So that's not actually gonna help you get your practice done in time, but it will help this video spread to more people. So if you're finding it useful, if you're finding it helpful, then please just click the like button. I would really appreciate that. So anyway, back to what we're talking about here. And once you've got a plan of what are the key things that you have got to do, and you've narrowed it down, you've accepted, okay, we can't do everything, we're gonna do a small number of them, then the really tricky bit is that you've got to stick to that plan. And what happens here is one of the reasons why we get less than we'd like done under time pressure, it's only partly because you know, there just physically isn't time to do stuff. One of the things that really trips us up is we're constantly wanting to be able to do more. We're constantly wishing that we weren't under the time pressure. We're constantly thinking, can I do this extra thing as well? Can I squeeze these other things in? And that means we are pretty distracted when we're actually practicing. Say you've got an hour long slot to practice. If you were literally totally focused on the things that you had to do, nothing else came into your mind, you just burnt through that hour, you could get a huge amount done. But what typically happens is we're thinking about, will I get enough done? Am I making enough progress? What about that other thing? If I get through this really quickly, will I be able to, to do that other bit of practice that I'm really hoping I can get in there? And when your mind is zipping around like this, you are distracted. You are not getting as much done on the really important bits of work. And, and that totally hits how effective you are at preparing in this time pressured situation. So what you've got to do here is you've made your plan. These are the things that I'm gonna try and do. Now we've got to stick to it and reduce the distraction, reduce the worry about other things. That's what's gonna make things effective. So that's all very well to say. It is helpful just knowing it, but how do you actually do it in practice? And some of the ideas that I've got here are coming about, I mean, it's mostly about making yourself accountable, really committing to this. So 
one thing that you can try is just writing down here are the things that I've decided that I'm going to focus on and here are the things that I'm going to let go. So if you put that down in writing, that kind of makes it official, makes it easier for your brain to accept, right, I'm genuinely doing this. Another thing that can happen, you know, if you've got a few days to practice for this, you know, this deadline, you're probably going to have a number of different practice sessions as well as, or instead of, you know, just writing down the big things, I am going to work on this, I'm not going to work on that, I'm going to let those go. Another thing you can do is just write down before each practice session, this is specifically what I'm working on. And that means you go into that session already knowing what you're meant to do. There's just that much less chance for your brain to be distracted and wish it could fit in other things, all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously, you also want to be doing everything you can to make your practice sessions as effective as they can be while you're aiming for this deadline. But this is something that, frankly, you want to be doing all the time when you're practicing, not just for deadlines. So I've, I've talked about that a bit in other videos. I've got my practice multiplier course that you can check out if you want to get into that. I'm not going to go into the detail of that here, but obviously all those things about practicing effectively definitely still apply. And that, that's really the way you've got to go after it. You accept that you're probably not going to be able to do everything before this deadline. You kind of work out, well, what does that mean that I am going to focus on? What are the big picture things? And then you take those strategies to make sure that you do stick to them. You don't get distracted by other stuff. Now, we did mention earlier, though, there is always the question of, well, should you have found yourself in this situation in the first place? And once the deadline has passed, you definitely want to look into that. You don't want to do it beforehand, though, because as we talked about, that is one of the things that's going to distract you. It's going to mean that you actually get less done and you're less effective at meeting the deadline. But once once the deadline is done and, you know, for better or worse, you've just given your performance on the day or whatever it is that you had to do here, then it is a good idea to ask, well, what's going on here? So what what planning did I do way back about how much I needed to, to work on, what I needed to work on to be ready for this? Was that plan suitable or was the reason that I found myself in this situation because it wasn't a good plan? And maybe you'll find actually the reason I was here is because I didn't have any plan at all. I just hoped and hoped that it would work out for the best. So this is when you can look back at those choices that you made earlier on and review them and say, can I learn something from this that will help me do a better job next time? Because, you know, that's that's always a great way to improve in the future. It's not just getting things right and everything always gets better. Sometimes things don't go to plan. But if you can learn from that, then you're really doing good stuff there. And a couple of things that come up and I see as reasonably common problems or common things that people might not have thought about. And these are actually ones that were brought up by the person who asked this question. So some good ones to just think about what might we do here. And one was you know, preparing for a gig. And actually, have you set yourself too challenging a set of material to play, assuming that it's you who has the choice over this? Because that's one, maybe not about how how you practiced, whether your practice plan was good in the run up to this, but did you actually set yourself the right goal in the first place? Because if it's just too challenging, you're going to find yourself in this situation where you're pressed for time and you just can't get it all done. So maybe you want to think about, well, should I change the aims, change the level that I'm aiming for uh, so that it just makes it more manageable? Another thing is, if you're getting these sort of things coming along all the time, what can you do to be more prepared naturally? So it's not about can I cram in a whole load of practice before an event like this? Is there something that you can do that means that you are naturally most of the way there and there's just less that needs to be done? So it's going to depend on your situation, but something that comes up a lot for me is if I'm asked to play a particular type of gig, uh, maybe a solo guitar gig, and there are a whole load of solo guitar pieces that I'd like to play for that. And one of the things I can do is rather than wait until someone asks me to do this and suddenly start practicing them and trying to get them up to performance readiness again, what if I make a habit of just keeping them at a decent level, not looking to have them perfect the whole time, 
but from time to time, just reviewing them, making sure they're at a basic level. So if I do get a sudden call with a, with a sharp deadline to have things ready, I'm starting from a much higher level rather than having to do everything from zero again. So hopefully that will be helpful for you if you come across this situation in the future where you are under time pressure as you're practicing. But another really important thing to be aware of is that there are some key things that you just have to have in your practice the whole time, otherwise you're not gonna get anywhere. So you might like to check out my video on one thing that without which your practice just might as well be pointless next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley-Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.